Today, film and television reflect more diversity than ever before, thanks in no small part to 20 years of work, of consistent pressure and commitment by the National Hispanic Media Coalition. And we're having an impact because we're there, we're at the table, and we're insisting, and we're being very clear with our message about the fact that we need to be included. With that kind of impact, another group might have declared victory and gone home. But the coalition has gone to Washington. It's working with lawmakers and policymakers to help craft legislation that's good not only for Latinos, but all communities of color. And because of that mission and, and our own desire, quite frankly, to be able to represent the communities that we serve, I think it's very important for us to seek ways to be able to really advance the course of the organization, to be able to brand it in a way that it's very positive, both for the community as well as the private sector. To ensure its goals move forward, the group has recently opened an office in Washington, D.C., led by Inez Gonzalez. This is where the decisions, the policy decisions are being addressed, and it's important that we be at the table with the decision makers, letting them know what's important for Latinos in media. We will advocate for more low-power FM stations, a way to keep local community radio alive. We will support the use of white space, a way to reclaim part of the public airwaves for the public interest. Twenty years ago, the coalition was concerned about what wasn't on the TV screen. Now it's worried about what is on the small screen, the hateful speech on the airwaves. DJs across America, demagogues all, or many of them, and even on television, are going on to their air day in, day out, and castigating the Latino community, immigrant Latino community, where Latinos are being blamed for everything that is wrong with this society. What job do the women and the children do that we have to have them here, other than the children's job is to dumb down the American children and overpopulate our schools? Just as the absence of ordinary Latinos from TV and film contributed to stereotypes, the coalition fears that such talk could damage how Latinos and immigrants are regarded throughout the nation. Lou Dobbs loves to bring out facts that are not so. They're coming across illegally, and therefore they are criminals. That we're bringing malaria, we're bringing leprosy, we're bringing all kinds of things. Now, ha, 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 they may be funny to some people, but there's always going to be a loco out there who's going to take it very seriously. Studies from the FBI, the Anti-Defamation League, and the Southern Poverty Law Center agree. Hate speech raises the number of hate crimes against Latinos, whether they're here with legal documents or not. Those statistics on hate crimes are not increasing just because. They're increasing because people in media who are irresponsible are fanning the fires of prejudice and hatred. And that's how it's manifesting itself. The coalition is insisting that radio, TV stations, and networks immediately drop such rhetoric from their programs. Latino World War II veterans. Sometimes it's about what isn't on the air, too. A half a million Latinos fought courageously under the United States colors in World War II, earning 12 medals of honor, and many more decorations for gallantry. Yet their stories of patriotism and sacrifices were omitted from Ken Burns' 15-hour PBS documentary series, The War. The reaction to being excluded was a firestorm. We shed our blood. We won as many Medal of Honors as, as any group, more so, proportionally speaking, and yet we are excluded. It's like we never existed. National Latino groups, including the coalition, banded together in what they're calling the Defend the Honor campaign, demanding historical inclusion. They pressured PBS to include not only Latino stories in the war documentary, but how the war affected Latinos' place in American society. It'll never, never happen again. I think PBS, I think CPB, I think Congress, they all recognize that this cannot be. Especially right now when our population is 15% of the U.S. It isn't just for Latinos that the coalition is doing this. It's for the whole nation's understanding of its past and its future. How are we going to be understood if no one knows the contributions and sacrifices that we have given to this country? The many contributions out in the fields doing all those jobs that Americans don't want to do anymore. How are people going to know that unless 
we are included in the media to give people a view, a bird's eye view of who we are and what we are. The coalition is also battling the SEC to make sure that the government doesn't relax the rules, limiting how many media outlets any one company can own in one market. The more that media giants are allowed to consolidate, the more the coalition believes that diversity will vanish and the prospect of minority media ownership disappears along with it. Latinos presently own about 1% of all television stations in the nation. We are 15% of the U.S. population and we only have 3% of the radio stations in America. There's a tremendous disparity here. And it isn't because Latinos don't want to buy those properties, it is because they're not affordable. In 2006, the group held hearings in Los Angeles on the issue with several FCC commissioners in attendance. And last year, Alex Nogales testified before the Senate Commerce Committee, arguing that more consolidation would further endanger minority media ownership. Media is a large component because it tells us who we are, what we are, and to a large degree, what we are worth. So unless we also have media properties where we can program our own things, our own cultural awareness, our own cultural information, what's going to happen is that we're not going to be on the tube. We're not going to be exposed to everybody. A letter signed by the coalition and 19 other groups let the FCC know that it should form a task force to assess how more consolidation would affect diversity before it moves ahead with any new consolidation rules. So it's very important that we also be given the opportunity to compete, to be able to put our product out there so that in fact our children and our adults as well can see themselves reflected on television. The group has also opposed the notion of a la carte that would let viewers customize their cable service by ordering channels individually instead of buying a package of bundle channels. Industry studies show that a la carte television would mean higher prices for consumers, fewer choices, and again, less programming diversity. What would happen is that that programming that is so specific to us would disappear. It's not going to be duplicated at ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox to the degree that is duplicated in these other areas. There is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Instead, the group would like to see legislation that protects small independent networks that can't compete with big advertising budgets of mega networks. We're not just talking, you know, LATV, CTV. We're talking as well about Asian Pacific American and Native American and African American telecommunication networks that would suffer. We need those networks to stay in place. The coalition is also educating Latinos about next February's changeovers from analog to digital TV. Alex Nogales has testified before Congress about this matter, too, and wants to make sure that the word goes out that no one is left with a dark screen a year from now. When you're not connected to the bigger world, you're going to miss out culturally, educationally, and every other which way. So it can't be that Latinos and other people of color are left out. Protests and petitions are one thing, but the coalition addresses the problem from the bottom up, too. Its fourth annual Latino Writers Program brought sponsors like NBC, ABC, and Southwest Airlines on board to help connect promising Latino writers with network executives and showrunners who call the shots on programs that finally make it to TV screens. The writers are the ones that tell our stories. They are the ones that tell us about ourselves, that expose our culture, to talk about all those wonderful things that we are all about. If you have Latinos absent from that panorama, our stories are never going to be told. 10 out of 11 writers in the 2006-2007 program are working in television and film. They hope to become the executive producers and showrunners of tomorrow. I think it's important for uh, this program to bring qualified Latino writers Quite frankly, not only to bring their own experiences, but they also reflect the general population. And, and, and it's that combination that I think makes it very powerful. Over time, the coalition has made Latinos a force to be reckoned with in the media. But as far as it has come, there is still further to go. Why? Because it's more about how can we truly get that multicultural point of view embedded into the fabric of, of, of the industry to properly represent day in and day out the communities that we serve.
If we can achieve that, I think we are just going to be a better industry, a better country, and a better representative of what America is all about, which is just a wonderful mosaic of diversity and multiculturalism.